Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Track Echoes. I hope your week is going well. And if you're listening to this program and it's normally scheduled time, which is the first week of December, I hope that your Christmas shopping is all done already. Probably not. Mine is not, but I hope that yours is. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Can you stop and reach over and get your Bible and join me there? Ephesians chapter 5. I will be noting a number of different Bible portions today, and so you may want a piece of paper and pen handy and just jot some down because I doubt you'll be able to keep up with me as I walk through, and I'll explain why we're doing it that way here today. I've got a gospel tract here. And by the way, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It refers to an evangelism tool. A tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We publish these in different languages, and I want to send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracts. I'm going to be highlighting one of these here in a moment. This one happens to be for our children, but oh, friend, you got to get these tools. They're going to enhance your ability to share the gospel. And I'll say more about that here in just a moment. But let me lead into our Bible study time this way with this question. What do you remember most from your high school days? What do you remember most from your high school days? Now, I realize that my question is rather wide open here, so let me narrow it down a little bit. Let me begin this way. First of all, were you genuinely born again when you were in high school? When you were a teenager, were you genuinely born again? If you were not, then did somebody at least try to tell you the gospel during your teen years? Well, all right. Now, if you were a believer in high school, did you learn and grow much during that era? Now, here's why I'm asking the questions. When I was a teenager during one of the typical regular Sunday services, the pastor spoke about the criteria God uses to measure or appraise our service to him. And he spoke about how at the judgment seat of Christ, that's a topic we've been dealing with all this week, how that at the judgment seat of Christ, our works as believers, our works in service for Christ will be evaluated. But my pastor said that we could begin to measure our own works now so to see how better prepared we could be uh, when we face the judgment judgment seat of Christ. He gave four criteria that I could use to personally evaluate my own labors, and I wrote them down then. I've kept the list all these years. I want to share with you the list of four criteria for determining whether our works are acceptable to God and whether they'll be praiseworthy at the judgment seat. So get your Bible, get pen and paper, and join me here. Ephesians, please, in chapter 5. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. This one is entitled, Are You in Danger? Are You in Danger? If you've got an older elementary youngster, they need to read this gospel tract. It was written about a boy, true story, about a boy when he was 12 out in a rowboat and it's at nighttime and a thunderstorm comes up and he has no light, but he has to use the lightning and the light that comes from the lightning to get that boat to shore. He's there in the boat all by himself. Oh, he didn't start out that way, but he ends up that way. It's a great story. It leads right into a clear presentation of the gospel. It's a fun story for kids to read. It makes the gospel clear. And friend, you're going to find that as an adult, you're going to enjoy this as well. It's just one of the tracks in the sample packet I want to send you. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you three ways by which you can contact us and give us your name and your mailing address. 
Please have pen and paper ready. And by the way, this is the first week of December. If you've not gotten gospel tracts dealing with Christmas, you're really cutting it close. You've got to get in contact with us right away. We have two particular tracks that you need. So please contact us. If you can't stay to the end of the program, jot down our website and use it to order tracks. The web address is Bible Tracks Inc. Dot O-R-G. All right, if your Bible's open to Ephesians chapter 5, look with me, please. I'm going to begin reading at verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. But listen to verse 10, proving what is the acceptable unto the Lord. Now, verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Stop right there. Now, I need to be referring, as I said, to a number of Bible verses today, and these verses will be found scattered throughout the New Testament. So again, I encourage you to jot them down, look them up later on. Also, uh, you're going to see today that my list is not exclusively just my list. These are some criteria that hopefully you have heard other pastors and teachers mention during your spiritual walk. The question for the day is, but what are some of the key measuring tools by which you and I can begin to evaluate our works and service for Christ? Criteria number one is this, were our works done according to God's will? Both verse 10 and verse 17 of Ephesians 5 talked about that. I could, by the way, use Romans 12, 2 right here. You probably know that verse, which says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But the verses I've picked are here in Ephesians 5. Verse 10 tells us to prove. The word means to discover or find out what's acceptable to Christ. But then verse 17 tells us to understand God's will. Oh, beloved, so much of God's will is not a secret, it's not hidden, it's openly stated right in the Bible. Read the Word of God, you'll find God's will. You and I can know it. The vast majority of God's will is openly displayed in the Word. Now, add to your list here for this criteria a couple of other places. Jot down this reference, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 and 22. Again, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 and 22, and also 2 Corinthians 5, 9. Here's criteria number two. Were our works done in association with Jesus? Were they done in association for, with Jesus? Jot down the reference here, John 15, verses 4 and 5. That's John 15, 4 and 5. Now, these verses tell us to abide in Christ. Those that abide in Christ, verse 5 says, will bear much fruit. But then verse 5 ends with these words, without me, without Jesus, ye can do nothing. Famous words there. Your labors and mine as believers need to be done in union with Christ and linked with him. We cannot serve independent of him. We can't serve independent of his word, of his Holy Spirit, and of his wisdom. To serve otherwise would make our labors sinful. You say, Mark, that's rather blunt. Well, I'm not making that up. Jesus, in the end of the Sermon on the Mount, People said, why call ye me Lord, Lord? People are saying, have we not done all these works in your name? He's going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. They did religious works, but they were iniquitous work because they were not done conjunction and association with Jesus. Criteria number three is this. Were our works done heartily as unto the Lord? Were our works done heartily unto the Lord? And these famous verses, Colossians 3, 23 and 24, are key here. If you've never memorized these two verses, you've got to do it. Here's what they say, Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ." To do something heartily simply means that we're doing it with our whole being. Every part of our life is involved in cooperating. 
Here's an illustration for you. Do you remember the prophet Jonah? Well, when he finally got to obeying God and preaching the gospel there in Nineveh, he was saying the right words. He did tell the gospel, but his attitude was not in cooperation with God. When the people of Nineveh responded and got saved, it caused Jonah to pout. He was not doing it heartily unto the Lord. Our labors, yours and mine, for Christ need to be involved. Our bodies, yes, but our wills, our emotions, and our minds. All of it in cooperation with God's plan. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 13 calls us to yield our members, our body parts unto God as instruments, and that word instruments means weapons, as instruments of righteousness unto God. That means yielding our members will include our mind, our will, and our emotion. Jot another reference down here, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. All right, criteria number four is this. Were our works done for God's glory? Were they done for God's glory? Another famous verse, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Now, (laughs) perhaps right about now, some of you are feeling a little disappointed. You were expecting some kind of special and unique Bible insight, but instead you got a well-known Bible verse here, but it's a Bible verse that's well-known but often forgotten. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Oh, beloved, during Jesus' earthly ministry, he frequently said that he served and he did things to the glory of his Father in heaven. That was his supreme motive. John 12, 28, it's just one of the places that say that. Constantly, I have to ask myself this question. Am I doing the things that I'm doing to be seen of men? and to receive the applause of men, or am I doing them so that Christ is magnified, that Christ is noticed? In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said in chapter 5 and verse 16 of Matthew, let your lights so shine before men that they may see your good works and do what? You remember how the verse ends? They may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now listen, listen, friend, God's word does speak about rewards. It does speak about crowns that believers can get to talk of them as a worthy subject. But you and I can never know what those rewards are going to be. What we can know is right now, the present acts that we're doing, and we can know those and the heart motive behind those acts. These we do have control over. Our key assignment, if I were to summarize all of this, it would be simply this, stated by Jesus in John chapter 15. Abide in me, Jesus said, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Without me, ye can do nothing. We're going to stand before the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. Let's begin to measure ourselves with God's criteria now so we have a good day and the judgment day. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.